Ken, in Western philosophy, the so-called mind-body problem has been one of the deep perennial uh, conundrums that philosophers and more recently scientists have uh, have faced. Uh, you come into this from various perspectives as a physicist, as someone who is from Japan, which is a non-Western traditional culture, cognitive science now, looking at modern technologies. So you have very diverse kinds of, uh, of specialties. Uh, when you view the mind-body problem, how do you define it? Well, so many people have said so many things about the mind-body problem, so it is really difficult to say something interesting or unique. <laughs> but having said that, uh, I think, uh, you know, because I come from the Eastern tradition, I think in the West, I, I mean, in the West, uh, people have generally separated it from the mind from the body. Mm. So the mind-body problem is a genuine problem. Mm. How can things of such a different character be together? Mm. But in the Eastern tradition, mind is the body and vice versa. If you go to a Kyoto Zen temple, there's, you see this very rich tradition of con contemplation and meditation and so on, and in which people generally assume that mind is a body. And by modifying body state, you can modify your mind state as well. Now, uh, it's really nice to have this tradition behind you, but at the same time, we are living in the modern era. So we have to link to the modern and contemporary sciences. Mm. I think the gist of the mind-body program from this perspective is that we are living here and now. We can talk about the mind, but the fact is that mind is here and now. And what is here and now? Our body. You know. Albert Einstein uh, formulated his uh, physical theories as if things happened in the four-dimensional space, space time, right? right yeah. So everything, the history of the universe is as if there are patterns in the four-dimensional space time. Right. What Einstein didn't understand, and he confessed that he didn't understand, is the nature of the now. <laughs> How is it that this present, <laughs> the now, is so special in the, you know, almost infinite history of the universe? Because it all looks so similar. Yeah, right? they look all similar. There's so, no way to differentiate in the physics exactly. any, any place in the four dimensional, three dimensions of space and the one yeah. of time. Yeah, exactly. Every point is the same, but we feel the now is very special. Exactly. So I think that's where maybe we can arrive at some breakthrough in the mind body problem because, you know, uh, we are living now and, uh, you know, we are, our consciousness is kind of anchored to the now. And the consciousness is anchored to the now because our body is here and now. So just as Albert Einstein uh, confessed that he couldn't understand why the now is so special in the history of the universe, we don't understand why consciousness is anchored to the now mm -hmm. unless we take into account the fact that we are embodied. We have a body. And since a body is a material, uh, it occupies a special space and time in the whole universe. Mm. So, you know, actually, by realizing that mind is a body and vice versa, we can come to grips with this very fundamental aspect of consciousness, which is it is anchored to the now. I think it's, it's certainly fair to say consciousness is anchored to the now and it's related to the body. And I think the Eastern tradition would, would have more of an emotional feel to that because of the meditative traditions yeah, yeah, that you have. Yeah. I understand that. I'm not sure that that makes any progress in helping to explain consciousness. It, I think superficially it sounds nice to say, but if you look at it from an analytical point of view of how do you produce that mental state to say the body is the mind and the mind is the body, to me that doesn't help you at all. It sounds like it helps you, yeah. but it really doesn't. Sure. Uh, and Robert, I actually <laughs> agree with you. <laughs> I'm disappointed. No, no, no. <laughs> you know, this, uh, th there was this crash paper by McTaggart. Uh, I think he was in Cambridge. He wrote about the unreality of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He a discussed... Eight, a and B. Yeah, time, yeah, yeah. A series, B series, series, yeah. and so on. Yeah. So I think the very fundamental issue here is the nature of time. Yeah. Unless we really go deep down into the reality of time or unreality of time, we can really, you know, uh, answer this very baffling question, why the conscious consciousness is anchored to the now, or for this matter, why we have 
our body anchored to the now uh, at all? It's a very fundamental question that even Albert Einstein didn't understand. Mm. And nobody understood uh, so far. So I, I think, you know, the problem of consciousness, if you go deep down, is very much related to these unsolved problems about space-time, you know, about the very existence of the universe. So this is really a, a fascinating and a different approach because most people would, would, would uh, reduce the mind-body problem to how can the brain, how can neurons generate consciousness? But what you're saying is the question may be a little bit broader than that. I think so. Because if you're, you're looking to, to anchor the consci consciousness in the now, yeah. what is that going to take? What kind of understanding of the basic physics, the, the space-time geometry of the exactly. world yeah. is required yeah. to do that, which makes consciousness even more fundamental in the structure of the universe, not just some local, how do you get consciousness out of brain tissue, but something that's embedded within the fabric of the universe. Exactly. Is that right? Exactly. That's a, that's a, that's a big expansion of the, of the uh, issue of consciousness. Yes, and uh, in mathematics, uh, people sometimes say that by generalizing a problem, you can arrive at uh, even more arrogant and uh, uh, universal solutions. Uh, so I suspect that the problem of consciousness is actually something that when you generalize it, you can arrive hopefully at a very elegant solution.